Okay, I am back at it. Uh, I'm gonna continue working on the floor and hopefully this weekend I get these gaps taken care of. Um, there were some some good comments, some healthy uh, conversation about the best way to tackle these. And I think the right answer, or I should say the answer that I'm gonna do, which isn't necessarily the right way to do it. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is a combination of both and I'll get into details on that in a bit. Okay, I'm over on the driver's side looking at this gap. Um, and if we look down in there, that's actually, that's not that bad. Uh, we're almost touching at the back. That's literally just a put a clamp on it, weld it, and call it good. Um, over here, it spaces out a little bit. Um, but, sorry, I'm definitely creating a shadow. But all that being said, it is not that big of a gap. So um, kind of what Don's suggestion was, hammer it over, weld it up, call it good. This is, I mean, not structural. It's already welded to where the, uh, I don't know what's called, the top of the... Um, or the front of the leaf springs mount, or the front shackle, if you will. It's not a shackle. Anyway, so the front leaf spring, it's got a big structure here that's connecting everything together. Um, this is not super structural. It is just to close up this gap and just add one more uh, piece of connection. Um, so I think that is the approach over on this side, um, especially back here. I don't have to worry about it. I might put something up where I can, uh, and just hammer it over and, and weld it up. Not critical. Um, that being said, let me go over to the passenger side and show you. Okay, over here on the passenger side, um, I'm guessing, you can kind of see it's bowed out a little bit there, the, uh, the back of the uh, rocker. I think someone did rockers and or wheel wells at some point in the past, but regardless, um, that gap is much bigger. Um, we're, we're calling it three eighths of an inch plus, probably at the widest almost, sorry, almost a half inch. So um, considering that this flange is maybe three quarters of an inch top tops, um, I don't think that'll work really to just hammer it over. It's gonna be a little, little less support than I would want. Um, so I think what I'm going to do here is a slightly different approach and I've yet to fully determine how I'm doing it. I'm either going to cut it, move it over, and then fill in, um, which does, uh, doesn't sound that appealing. Don't wanna make like two seams kind of there to fill up a half inch gap. Uh, or I might cut off from here to here and then just create an L that goes underneath and weld to there, weld to the floor. Um, that would be, I'm assuming, the stronger solution. Again, that being said, not super critical. Um, I'm probably overthinking it, <laughs> but uh, if you, if this surprises you, you haven't watched enough of my channel. Okay, here's here's my solution to this. Um, from here to here, the width of this or the length of this lip here is about six inches. Four of it has free space below it, meaning that two of these uh, six inches up to about here uh, is directly over where the leaf spring mounts in the front. So I can't, even if I make an L that's six inches, I can't get all the way under there uh, for two of those inches. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make an L four inches, um, drill holes in the floor to go down to the L and push the L over to, and weld it to the inner rocker here. Um, and then probably just put a slit here and then pound it over, weld up the seam wherever I need to, just so it's all complete and metal. Um, it's a little awkward, but not, not the end of the world. Um, and I did notice that at the very back here, the rockers were separated apart. Um, so I made a hole here, and when I weld up, I'm going to go ahead and just plug weld that. Uh, also, on the wheel well itself, these holes, that hole was drilled all the way through. I don't know if that's an alignment hole or part of the stamping, but also at the bottom, you can see it's kind of separated there. So I think the last weld on there is maybe up here. Um, so I'm going to put just one of my copper, backers on, copper backer on there 
and just weld it closed. Um, I, of course, will clean this up before I weld anything, um, just so it's a little more secure. It's probably, I mean, it's lasted this long, it's probably fine. Um, but what, I, what I've been doing is getting everything prepped because I'm dealing with so much galvanized, uh, I'm gonna be wearing a respirator. Um, and so what I wanna do is just get everything prepped uh, and then when I start with the grinding and the welding, then I'll put on the, the respirator and protect myself. And after that, it's really hard to make video. So uh, I'll get everything prepped and then it's dark over there, but I did the same over there and just kind of hammered it over and get it, got it prepped for welding. And then I can just go through and start welding and grinding to my heart's content. Okay, I amended my earlier plan. Uh, and here's what I've come up with. Uh, you can see I went ahead and I cut off the tab, sorry about the noise, the tab that was vertical that was never going to reach. So I cut that off. Now I have nice access to everything. Uh, before I weld, obviously I'm gonna get back here and clean up. I did do that before in anticipation of, uh, of welding it in. Uh, so this is weld through primer, but I'll probably, looks like I missed a spot. I don't know what my plan was there. I'm probably just going to weld to it. Um, so I'll see if I can clean that up a little bit and um, just wire wheel this just so I make sure that I, I don't have anything crazy back there and reapply weld through primer. Um, I, you probably won't be able to see this. Maybe you will. We'll try. Um, so you can see the gap going all the way down. And then right here is where the leaf spring mount is. So my L can only really go four inches, but what I did was, instead of going four inches and then figuring something else out, I just made an L that is six inches, and it's going to go somewhere like here. Um, I'm going to cut appropriately here, so it really is um, six inches on the top, and then this flat part will be four-ish inches, um, and then, I will hook it underneath, weld down through the floor to the L, and then all the way across. Um, this piece I got from the old transition pan uh, back by the trunk. This is where the trunk drop-off was like this, or maybe, maybe like this, <laughs> however it was. Um, so it already had a nice little L in it. I'll straighten it out a little bit, um, and I'm sure I'll need to make it conform to whatever craziness they have going on here. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and press on, put a few more holes in the top part here, make it to where it jogs in so I can go under. And then what I will do is, this will be easier to show once I have it in place, um, I'll just weld across so that the floor meets up to the L here. Uh, all of that will be a lot clearer once it's actually there. So underneath the car, just to give you an idea of what I'm working with, uh, here's the leaf spring bolt and where the uh, where it gets mounted up. Here's this little pocket um, that I need to avoid. So this is the new floor, and what you saw before was welded down into this. Um, it's pretty thick uh, material, but here's where I'm making the new. Those are the three holes I just made, and the new piece is going to hook under here. And give me a sec, I'll put it in place and show you. We're going to attempt to do this with one hand, and let's see if I fail miserably. So, with that piece up there, it should go something like that. So that tucks up nicely, um, creates a nice seam, no more gap. And I'll probably, what I'll probably do is, before I weld it, I'll take one of my jack stands or something and, and just make sure it's pushed up flush because it is possible that it comes loose, right? Like I wouldn't want to start welding it and have it be like that. So just something to hold it up. Oh, I might be, be able to even just put a clamp right here put and push up and put a clamp, um, clamping the edge of the wheel well so it kind of stays tucked. But regardless, um, sorry, there's tons of shadows. I'm at a really awkward angle, but that should be what I'm working with when I'm all done. If you saw my last video, um, my welder was making a weird noise upon startup. So someone suggested uh, taking compressed air and just blowing it out. 
um, which is a good call. I've never, I don't recall ever doing that. And it's got a fan to exhausts, which means it's sucking up anything that's in the garage. Um, so I did that, took it apart and uh, just kind of blew it out. I was surprised at the cloud of debris that came out, but got around the fan really well and didn't have any problems with it after that, which is great. However, I did, uh, when I took the nozzle off to clean it, it had troubles threading back on. So um, that was awesome. So I found the right um, tap size and just kind of gently ran a tap into it to clear out anything in the nozzle and it threaded back on okay. Okay, there are the finished welds. Um, I obviously still need to grind down. I'm gonna do that when I do the rest of these. Um, and especially into the galvanized, it it sometimes has uh, has gaps in there um, just because of the way it reacts to the galve. So I'm gonna grind off and make sure I've got good penetration on all of these. That, this one I'm particularly proud of. That is as flush as it gets. Um, so that's that's gonna be my, my shining example of uh, welding so don't look at anyone else just look at just look at that weld that's that's beautiful <laughs> anyway um so that basically finishes up this uh piece of the project um an option would have been to put this l on top um grind off these flat and put it on top i didn't want to do that because that would essentially have the seam three seams or three pieces of metal joining at one seam all exposed to the underneath. It's a minor thing, probably would have been fine because I'm going to seam seal it, but um, in my mind this just kind of provides a little more um, a little more protection from anything splashing in and getting in between those seams. It's minor, but it took a little more work to, to get it this way and I'm a little happier. Um, you might be able to see there's still that I think that is small enough. I'm gonna do kind of like what I did on the passenger, or sorry, the driver's side, um, and just hammer it over and weld it up. Um, it's small enough of a gap that I'm not concerned as much about that. So I'm kicking myself. I have a, a vent fan that I use in the garage um, just to either remove hot air in the summer. Um, it's really good for that, but also I like to turn it on when I'm welding. Um, it helps move any smoke and fumes out of the way. Um, and I turned it on when I was welding last night and forgot to turn it off. So it was running all night. I lost all of my warm air in the garage. And now instead of being a comfortable 45 to 50, we're now mid thirties, uh, which is a little, little cold for my taste. So I'm not likely to get a lot done today. Um, probably wait till tomorrow, see if things warm up a little bit. I don't have a space heater or anything in here, uh, but at this rate, that might be in my future. Okay, and I did break down and get the new bracket set. Uh, uh, it's, uh, I am kicking myself a little bit for doing that, but um, it's really just a, a time proposition. Um, these brackets are serviceable. And I mean, there's some bends and some things that need to be fixed on them. And obviously they need to get cleaned up before I can use them. Um, the amount of time I would take getting the existing ones cleaned up and salvaging this and making another one of them uh, to go onto the other side, um, I figured it was worth it to break down and buy the bracket set. Now I will say, usually for most of these parts, CJ Pony parts is kind of my go-to. Um, you can sometimes find better better things at better prices at Jegs or Summit or whatnot. I found the same Dynacorn kit from Kentucky Mustang. Um, I honestly have never ordered from them before. I've heard of them. Uh, they they shipped out next day and it was ninety dollars cheaper than CJ Pony Parts. So um, I'll let you know if if they arrive and how they arrive. But it's they're both Dynacorn. They're both uh, they should be the same parts. So. Um, I figured it was worth it to snag it and whatever I do with the brackets that I don't need. Um, I've got all my all my other little brackets in there already. I don't know if they're original or not. I'm guessing they are. But if I don't need them, I'll either sell them or give them away or something. Okay, I think that's going to do it for 
for this little mini project. Thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, next up is continuing to work my way um, from back to front on this floor and making everything cleaned up and pretty. Um, yeah, more grinding welds. Yay. Thank you.